Hello, everyone. My name is Kermit the Frog. Taboo Conspiracy. Well, in that case, I'm very sorry. But how do we know you're not Kermit the Frog? I mean, you never show your face. We've never seen you and Kermit in the same room together. Do you expect us just to believe you because you say you're Taboo Conspiracy? And the reason I'm reluctant to just blindly believe it is, well, because of this. Hello, everyone. My name is Taboo Conspiracy, and I'm a flat earther. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. Well, now you can see why I don't believe him that he's not Kermit the Frog. As I've said before, I believe that Flat Earth is the key to ending our physical, mental, scientific, educational, financial, and spiritual enslavement. Exactly! I rest my case. But sadly, Mr. Conspiracy, if that is your real name, you're wrong about everything. And I know that may seem like a pretty bold claim, but trust me, after we work our way through his video, it'll become clear as mud. Please subscribe. That's the only reason why I'm here, and that's why I'm passionate about the Flat Earth. And that's why the anti-truthers are trying so hard to shut us down. What exactly is an anti-truther? Oh, right, he means an anti-truther, doesn't he? <laughs> Bloody accents. Well, if by anti-truther you mean people who aren't dumb enough to believe the Earth is flat, then I'm guilty as charged. But with one minor adjustment, if I may. I don't want to shut flat earthers down. In fact, I encourage flat earthers to make videos where they claim they live in a magical space pizza. I mean, I'm clearly not talented enough to make videos about anything that doesn't involve reacting to other people's content, am I? My topic for this presentation is, what does it mean to be a flat earther? That you've completely lost your grip on reality? Or that you are quite happy to lie to yourself and anyone else who's dumb enough to believe you? We know that the media would proclaim that flat earthers are just stupid or uneducated, holding on to unproven antiquated beliefs. Well, I have a bachelor's a Juris Doctorate, and a Master's, and many other Flat Earthers also have advanced degrees. Hmm, no. The only bachelor's you've got is a cup of soup, based on what we see in your videos, obviously. And I hope you're not just gonna do what you usually do in your videos. You make statements like, there are Flat Earthers with advanced degrees, but what you never do is demonstrate it. Who are these Flat Earthers? What are their degrees in? Having a degree means nothing unless it's relevant to the subject you're talking about. Wait, can you have a degree in flat earther-ness? We have PhDs, engineers, pilots, military professionals, lawyers, surveyors, and teachers. Well, tell us who they are then. I mean, if I was sat here saying that I've got an advanced degree, I would feel obliged to show what my degree is in and where I went to school. But in my own defense, I'm not a little liar, am I? So I don't do that. You, on the other hand, well, you do it all the time. Okay, so maybe we have the same formal education, but maybe we flat earthers are just ignorant of the heliocentric model. I don't think that's what's going on with flat earthers. Look, I'm sure there are some people claiming to be flat earthers who are pretty smart, and I honestly don't think the flat earthers are ignorant of the heliocentric model. It's actually much simpler than that. So, time for a hot take from Creaky. I would say, and this is purely my own opinion, that a huge number of so-called flat earthers know that the earth is a globe perfectly well, and that they just choose to go against the grain. Much like yourself, pal. You're clearly not an idiot, but that makes you something much, much worse. You and many others like you are nothing more than liars. Surprisingly, nearly every flat earther knows more about the heliocentric model than your typical ball earther. We're going to have a little quiz here. Let's see how good you flat earthers are at restating heliocentric dogma without looking up the answers. Ooh, I do love a good quiz. So let's see how I'm gonna get on with what I am sure will be very cleverly worded questions then, shall we? Question one. How fast does the ground of the earth allegedly rotate at the equator? Approximately 1,000 miles per hour. Oh, you're giving the answers straight after the questions. Okay, fine. This quiz is for flat earthers, though, isn't it? So I guess you would need to give the answers straight away so they don't get confused. Or worse, have to read a 
actual verifiable information. But measuring Earth's rotation in miles per hour is not really the right way of doing it anyway. But okay, I want you to be happy. So yeah, it's a gnat cock over a thousand miles per hour, which equates to 15 degrees per hour. Or one rotation a day, which oddly enough lines up perfectly with what we would expect to see on an oblate spheroid with a circumference of 40,075 kilometers. Weird, I know. Question two, how fast is the alleged Earth's orbit around the sun? 66,600 miles per hour. Earth's orbit around the sun is not at a constant speed. It varies slightly throughout the year due to the elliptical shape of Earth's orbit. On average, the Earth travels at a speed of about 29.78 kilometers per second, or roughly 107,208 kilometers per hour. I wonder why you went with miles per hour on this instead of kilometers per hour, though. It couldn't possibly be because 107, 2008 kilometers per hour is 66,600 miles per hour, which you think means something like the devil or the Illuminati, Freemasons. Cherry pick match? Question three. How far away is the sun purportedly from the Earth? 93 million miles. Okay, the distance from Earth to the sun is 93 million miles, and it ain't a guess, pal. We use something called the astronomical unit and the principles of triangulation to determine it. Right, okay, the astronomical unit is defined as the mean distance between the Earth and the sun. The definition allows scientists to use it as a standard unit for measuring distances within our solar system, and it was originally defined based on observations of the Earth-Sun distance. And it's been refined over time and is very, very accurate. Triangulation is a geometric method used to measure distances to objects that are far away and cannot be measured directly. In the case of the Earth-Sun distance, astronomers use a phenomenon known as the parallax. As the Earth orbits the Sun, nearby stars appear to shift their position slightly against the background of the more distant stars and this apparent shift is called the parallax and by observing the position of certain stars when earth is at opposite points in its orbit about six months apart astronomers can measure the angle of the shift using basic trigonometry and knowing the diameter of earth's orbit they can then calculate the distance to the sun question four how are seasons caused according to the heliocentric model because the Earth is tilted. Seasons on Earth are primarily caused by the tilt of Earth's axis relative to its orbit around the Sun. The axial tilt combined with Earth's orbit leads to variations in the intensity and duration of sunlight received at different times of the year. The tilt causes two key phenomena. See, I can say phenomena. I was pretending in the last video. Midio. And these are the key phenomena. Summer solstice around June 21st is in the Northern Hemisphere. The North Pole is tilted towards the Sun. This results in the Northern Hemisphere receiving the most direct sunlight and experiencing its longest day of the year. It marks the start of the summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Winter solstice. Around December 21st, in the Northern Hemisphere, the North Pole is tilted. Yeah, you guessed it away from the sun. This then leads the northern hemisphere to receiving the least direct sunlight and experiencing its shortest day of the year. And it marks the start of winter in the northern hemisphere. Question five. How many degrees is the alleged axial tilt of the earth? 23.4 degrees or 66.6 .6 degrees, depending on how you want to view it. And you only want to view it at 66.6 .6 degrees for the same reason you switched the miles per hour instead of kilometer per hour on one of the earlier questions. Because you think that 66.6 .6 actually means something. Come on, pal, I expected better than this from you. I mean, if an idiot like me can easily answer these questions, then surely one of your degree-holding flat earth friends should easily be able to do the same and explain it better. Question six, how far away is the moon allegedly? From surface to surface, it would be 234,000 miles. So the average distance from the earth to the moon is approximately 384,400 kilometers or 238,855 miles. But the distance can vary slightly because the moon also follows an elliptical orbit. But the figures provided are commonly accepted as the average values. Also, precise measurements of the distance to the moon have been made using radar reflections and lunar missions, confirming the average distance. Well, would you look at that, another fact that we can easily verify. Question seven. 
What is the radius of the alleged ball Earth, and what is its circumference? Radius equals 3,959 miles. Circumference, 25,000 miles. The average radius of Earth is approximately 6,371 kilometers, or 3,959 miles. And this value represents the distance from the center of Earth to its surface on average. But it's important to note that the Earth isn't a perfect sphere, but slightly flattened at the poles and bulging at the equator due to its rotation. I'm starting to wonder what the point of his video is. I mean, so far, all he's done is tell us things we all already know. I haven't even had to debunk anything yet. Question eight. What formula can you use to determine the rate at which the alleged ball Earth drops away from you? eight inches per mile squared. Mm, kind of. The formula eight inches per mile squared is a simplified approximation for estimating the amount of Earth's curvature over a relatively short distance. That's the key. And it's often referred to as the rule of thumb for curvature. But it is not the most accurate way to calculate Earth's curve, especially over long distances. You know, like the distances around the Earth, they're long. The formula you mentioned, which states that for every mile of distance, the Earth curves down by eight inches, is a rough approximation based on the term of the spherical Earth formula for calculating curvature. C is the curvature in meters, D is the distance in meters, and 6,371 is the approximate radius of the Earth in kilometers. And when you use this formula, it provides a simple way to estimate the curvature for small distances. But it becomes increasingly inaccurate as the distances grow, but it uh, because it because it doesn't account for Earth's ellipsoidal shape. It assumes a perfect sphere. Try to find any globe-loving audience anywhere that can answer those questions better. Well, I suppose I am a globe-loving audience member. And I don't want to toot my own horn, yeah? But I think I've answered them way better. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, let's see what else Taboo has got to say, shall we? We Flat Earthers are certainly not ignorant of the heliocentric model. In fact, when you really think about the flying, vortexing, heliocentric model, you begin to realize how stupid it really is. Mm, right. Now, flat earthers may realize that, but the rest of us, not so much, mate. And listen, like I've said so many times in so many of my other videos, just because you don't like it, that doesn't make it any the less true. And I know I'm just banging my head against a brick wall, yeah? But don't you ever wonder why it is that everything people like me explain can be verified by anyone else who chooses to look at the information for themselves? Or is that why everything Flat Earth has tried to do to prove that the Earth is flat just ends up showing us what we already know, that it's a globe? It's a globe of the whole world. Since they try to obscure their actual beliefs, let me tell you what a ball Earther believes. They believe all of the planets, moons, asteroids, meteors, and satellites of our solar system are chasing after the sun that is flying around our galaxy at a speed of 514,000 miles per hour. So the approximate speed of the sun's motion within the Milky Way is estimated to be about 220 kilometers per second, 137 miles per second. This orbit speed can vary slightly as it moves in its elliptical path around the galactic center. And it takes the sun approximately 230 million years to complete one full orbit around the center of the Milky Way galaxy, which is referred to as a cosmic year or a galactic year. But it's important to note that the motion of the stars, including our sun, within a galaxy is a complex interplay of gravitational forces and their orbits can be influenced by the distribution of mass within the galaxy. And this orbital motion is a fundamental aspect of galactic dynamics and is crucial in understanding the structure and evolution of galaxies like our own. That's ridiculous. But what's even more crazy is the fact that they believe that all of the planets and moons of the solar system are all on this same plane of the sun as they chase after the sun. Well, if you ask me, what's ridiculous is grown men on YouTube claiming to believe the Earth is flat. But whatever floats your boat, pal. You keep using the word belief, and there's really no need to. We don't believe that the Earth is a globe. It's just that all the observations, measurements, and experiments that get carried out always 
give us the same result when it comes to the shape of the Earth. Now, flat Earthers, on the other hand, well, they may claim to believe that the Earth is flat, and that's fine. Believe whatever the hell you want. But believing that the Earth is flat is no different than believing in fairies or unicorns. Just because you claim to believe it, that doesn't mean that they actually do exist. Because there is not a single shred of evidence that backs up anything you claim to believe. If you're still struggling with the silliness of this, next time you're in a marathon, try sidestepping back and forth at great distances while simultaneously trying to keep up with the leader, and maybe you'll see the problem. Like I've said before, I don't care how many degrees you have, this is stupid. Yeah, you cared about degrees at the start of your video though, didn't you? When you were claiming that you know some flat earthers with advanced ones. And yet we are still left wondering who exactly those flat earthers are. And now you're saying you don't care about degrees. Yeah, I'm finding this all highly suspicious. Now, I will actually link his video in the description below because there's a hell of a lot more to it. But all he does is show something that demonstrates the earth is a globe and his only response is... That's stupid, which itself is also stupid, which is why I'm not going to dignify any of them with a response. Thank you so much for all the super thankers. I said thankers, get your mind out of the gutter. Be disgusting. Don't forget, if you are able to support what I do here on YouTube, then you can click on one of the links which is listed in the description below this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Love you, bye. All right, all right, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe by order of the creaky blinder.